Come join us each week as we dive into topics about the joys and the struggles of motherhood. By no means are we experts. We're practically flying by the seat of our pants, or should I say, mom jeans. On this podcast, you will find a judgment-free zone where we discuss not only the best parts of being a mom, but the not-so-glamorous parts too. You can expect unfiltered, real mom talk, humor, grace, and a sense of sisterhood. What makes our podcast unique is that we understand there's no one-size-fits-all approach when it comes to being a mother. We're not going to pretend that we know everything too, because we definitely don't. We just want a place to share our stories with you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Mom Jeans, trying to fit into motherhood. Hello, hello. We wanted to take a minute to reintroduce ourselves. Uh, we are Mom Jeans, the podcast, and we are your hosts. I'm Michelle. I'm Danielle. I'm Leah. I'm Lisa. And I'm Michaela. We started this podcast a few months ago because we found that we don't talk enough about the raw and real parts of the conception, pregnancy, birth, motherhood really the way we should. We're five women, four with kids, and one who has decided not to. But And we've experienced the same journey of motherhood from very different angles. Yes, different angles, different perspectives. And that's what I love about this podcast. We bring so many unique perspectives and different ways of parenting. Like I might do something completely different than another person, and yet we – give each other grace and love. And I feel like we learn from each other too. Like things maybe we didn't, I didn't think about that you did or vice versa. So that's why I love this group and I love this podcast. And I'm so thankful for you ladies and that we're able to take this journey together. With that said, today we are going to talk about gatekeeping. It's a little kind of like a hot topic. So it's going to be a little bit of a shorter episode, but just talking about how we gatekeep in our life. But before we do that, we are going to do our check-ins as always. Lisa, would you like to start us off? Yeah. So I was down at my parents this past weekend uh, and, you know, a little bit different than our usual check-ins, kind of a little bit of an insight into my, why I am the way I am. Uh, so this weekend we went down cause my aunt and uncle were in town for the final four. Uh, and I wanted them to meet Aubrey. They'd met Hannah before, but wanted them to meet Aubrey, but, uh, we were down there and on Friday, Saturday, um, my dad, Brandon, uh, me and my dad's friend, were going to go golfing and, um, my mom was like, okay, well, I, I want to do something before you guys go golfing. So Luther, can you watch Hannah? My, Luther's my dad, obviously. Uh, so he was, she was like, can you, can you watch Hannah? And, uh, he started to like panic and I was like, what's happening? Like, why are you panicking? He's like, I, we're going to be late. I can't be late. I can't, I hate being late. I'm not, I'm going to be late. And he was like freaking out. He yelled at my mom cause he was going to be late. And I was like, Oh, I get that way. I get that way all the time. Like, yes, I have times of being late for sure, but I hate being late. I feel like it's disrespectful to the people that I'm late, you know, to meet with. And so it really, I was like, Oh, that's where I get that. That's really interesting. And then my mom was like, okay, well, I'm going to watch the girls. And I was like, already I was uneasy about going to play golf. If she didn't have like a friend who was going to come help her watch the girls, because Hannah's, Hannah's a lot right now. You know, she's running around. She's, she's independent. She wants to do what she wants to do. Um, and I said to my mom, I was like, mom, I'm, I'm not going golfing if you're going to be watching them alone. And she's like, oh no, no, my friend Michelle's going to come over. And I was like, okay, great. What time is she coming over? She's like, oh, she'll be over soon. And I was like, okay, sounds good. So I was feeding Aubrey before I was going to get ready to go golf. Uh, I was going to meet the guys at the golf course. And within the time span of me sitting down to feed Aubrey, Hannah ran outside in the front yard. And my mom was like yelling at her to come in the house. Well, Hannah doesn't react well to that. She's going to do what she's going to do. And she's like running down the block, like running down the sidewalk. And my mom's running after her and she's not listening. And I was like, so my mom finally gets her back inside. I said, mom, what would you have done if I weren't here with Aubrey? 
in that situation. And I was like being kind of like a jerk, like testing her. And she's like, I would have taken Aubrey with me. I'm like, wrong. Don't take Aubrey with you. You set her down on the floor and you run after Hannah. Because if you're running with Aubrey, you're not gonna be able to grab Hannah, you know, like having all these conversations. And I started to realize, I was like, okay, this is why I always am like, I want to be able to do it all by myself. Like Brandon's going on a trip in a couple of weeks and I'll be by myself with the girls. And he's like, you should call your mom up and have her come up. And I'm like, no, I can do this. I want to be able to do this. And I was like, that's why I do that. Right. So then we're, we're sitting talking about what she would have done in that situation. And Hannah locks herself in between my parents' screen door and the door. My mom had no idea where Hannah was. I knew because I was keeping an eye on her. And I said, Hey mom, where's Hannah right now? And she's like, I don't know. Oh my gosh. I don't know. I don't know. And she started panicking. And I was like, this is why I don't want you to be alone. And I'm not saying we can't handle it. Like Brandon and I hardly have the girls by ourselves, right? Like if it maybe for an hour, not, not four hours, which is what it would take to golf plus the travel time. So five hours. And, you know, then I'm, so I decided not to golf and we stayed at, you know, with the girls and my mom's friend isn't, isn't over. She hasn't come over. It's an hour in, it's two hours in, it's three hours in. I said, mom, where's your friend? She was supposed to come over any minute now. And she's like, oh, um, something must have happened. Go get my phone. I'll check my phone and see. No text messages from her. Nothing like nothing. So mom, did you actually tell her to come over? She's like, well, yeah. I mean, I told her to stop by whenever she wanted to because they were going to come over for dinner. And I was like, okay, so lying to us also isn't the right solution here. Like, you know, it's like that pride thing. Like we need to let go of that. And I need to let go of that. And watching my mom, like I understand my mom was so hurt that I felt like I couldn't trust her with the two girls. It's not that I don't trust you. It's just they're a lot. And when they're six and four, it's different than when they're two and, you know, whatever. At least Aubrey can't move right now, right? She stays in one spot when you put her in there. But anyway, so that, that was my week. <laughs> well, we had a lot happen in the last two weeks since we were last on this podcast. But I guess most relevant to the podcast um, is kind of circling back to I debated whether or not to bring this up. Um, and if we decide we want to take it out, we totally can. But um, I have been for like the last two months having some pretty chronic pain in my um, C-section scar area. And to the point where there's moments where it's excruciating, like 10 out of 10 pain. Um, and I've felt like the color was getting a little bit darker. And, and finally, you know, I think Lisa's my voice of reason a lot. (laughs) Um, Lisa encouraged me to call the doctor and just go in. And so last week I went in fully expecting our doctor to just be like, yeah, this is normal. You're going to have discomfort for the rest of your life. Um, because she says everything is normal and you know, yes, everything's normal. Everything's fine. Um, to my surprise, she immediately felt swelling and um, something abnormal in in the C-section area. And so I am going to get an ultrasound done tomorrow to hopefully identify what that may be. Um, she thinks it's probably one of two things, um, which would require another surgery. Um, so just hoping that we go in tomorrow and the ultrasound is clear and then I just have discomfort and that's fine. I can deal with that. Um, but you know, kind of going back to that, to the C-section, um, here we are 13 months out from it and kind of feel like I'm starting over again (laughs) in my recovery process. Did this just spark up Leah or have you had some persistent discomfort? Since you had lessons. I've had mild discomfort, but it got, it got worse like two months ago. Um, and then it, and then I started getting the like moments of excruciating pain where it would like take my breath away and like have to do some deep breathing. And I think that's what, I think that's what tr- triggered me to like 
ask Lisa, like, did you have this? Like, why, you know, because it did come, I felt like it kind of came out of nowhere. Um, so, I mean, I am glad that at least I went and we'll see what the ultrasound has to say tomorrow, but. You'll definitely have to keep us posted on what happened. Yes. <laughs> I mean, one way or the other, like, it's kind of like a, and I don't know how you look at it, but it's kind of like a. I don't know if it's a lose-lose or a win-win, right? Like you don't want anything to be wrong with you, but you also want an answer. And so like, if it's fixable by a minor surgery, then great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, keep us posted on next week's episode. Yeah. Well, and we get text tomorrow. We'll be thinking about you. Thank you. I, uh, I asked Steven to go with me because I just feel a little uneasy about it. So I'm, I'm glad that he'll be able to be there good awesome Ugh. anything else to share about your week <laughs> we got a house <laughs> <laughs> after five years of trying to buy a house we finally got one yay so, wait you're moving we are uh, the ghost made its appearance That's today amazing. as well just fyi <laughs> can you tell me <laughs> So, by the way, on this podcast, every time we edit, we find something weird, like it's either saying it's going to bed when no one said it or just random stuff. So, please. Um, last us. week's transcripts, I forgot to send this to you guys. There's a um, clip saying, I'm a ghost. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Dead> serious. <laughs> it's Michelle, and it says, I'm a ghost. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. So that is so I'm creepy. Aware. Oh god. So for our listeners, um, I'm convinced that my current house that we live in is haunted. There's a lot of things that have happened that there's a ghost prevalent. Um, the ghost's presence is I said alive and well, but Danielle pointed it out that it's it's dead. <laughs> it's dead and well. You know, <laughs> dead and well. Um, but yeah, last week's transcript said I'm a ghost. My gosh. Freaky. Okay. Tell Freaky. us one of the creepy things that I just have to know. I'm all about that stuff. So, a lot of stuff falls in just like random places. So, there's this one book in Wesson's room that has fallen off the shelf and landed in the middle of his room, like unreasonably far away from where the shelf is. And it's fallen off multiple times, no matter where I like move the book. Um, today, all of Wesson's bathroom toys just went kaboom um out of nowhere we had this valance over our kitchen window that i say jumped off of the jumped off of the wall because it again ended up in like the far middle of the room not like like if you were thinking um technically mathematically i don't know the angle at which it landed versus what would have been, um, what's the science that I'm trying to look for? I don't know. What would have made sense to calculate? No way, shape, or form. Um, we hear a lot of weird noises. When we first moved in, I swore I heard kids crying on multiple different occasions. Um, and that was what really gave me the willies. You gave me the um, chills just now. So yeah, there's there's just a lot of weird things that happen here. And so we're moving and it's great and I can't wait. <laughs> well, I'm excited that you're moving. Yeah. Tell the ghosts that they have to stay. Yeah, we're they not stay. pals. No. They're staying here. <laughs> oh, that is creepy. Do you feel like uh, Wesson ever looks like he sees something? Because I know like mm -hmm. kids can be sensitive to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll like point at absolutely nothing and like walk towards it. <laughs> um, no, no, no. no and and that's that's the thing that i think like just made me the most uncomfortable is like a lot of things were happening in his room or around his stuff and i'm just like ah ick no not here for it so when are you supposed to move into the new house uh we won't move in actually until we we close may 31st um so then we'll move in at the beginning of June. But okay. Stephen has a bunch of tournaments, so it's probably going to take us a little while to move in. <laughs> You're like, I'll be there the next day, but it might take him a little while. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, if anyone wants some light watching or TV this weekend, uh, there was an episode of The Dead Files that was done in Flagstaff. And as you'll see in the episode, they are going to Crystal Magic downtown. And it was only going to be like a quick 30 minute, 45 minute episode. And they found so much paranormal activity downtown that they extended it into a special investigation that was like a two hour episode. Uh, I think it's called Dead Files Special Investigations, The Haunting of Flagstaff. My husband and I watched it. It's very eerie, but also very entertaining and juicy. So there you go. There's my recommendation for the weekend. Perfect. I'm going to check that out. I'll go quickly in this week. Uh, my biggest excitement is I have a beanie baby inside of me for us all us millennials. Uh, baby boy is the size of a beanie baby. And uh... <laughs> I took that far too literally, and I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's so late. But <laughs> And I will also be at the OB tomorrow, Leah. Leah so I hope to give you a high five and um, a hug. I, if my 20-week anatomy scan. I'm mostly excited. I'm a little anxious. I think the first half of pregnancy, I've been a combination of sick and stressed. And so I just need some reassurance that things are going well, things are progressing the right way. So I'm just very eager for tomorrow. Uh, So that's all that's really going on in my world. For me, I don't know. I just feel like I've been a hot mess this past week. Like there's some days being a stay-at-home mom, I feel like I'm on it. Like I'm doing the chores, I'm cooking dinner, like everything's great, but the weather's been cold and windy here until today it was really warm. And then I just get off schedule and I'm just like, I don't feel like doing anything. And I, I told Ryan last night, I was like, I don't even feel like a person today. Like he's like, what? You are a person. You're a great mom. And he, you know, he's talking me up and I was like, I just feel, I even know what I feel like, but like you told me about your day having adult conversations and you asked me what I did and I played with the truck going with a truck like for an hour with Weston like we were putting carrots into the dump truck then we were driving it over and dumping out the carrots like just random just random stuff I'm just like so I feel bad I feel guilty for even feeling that way like I love spending time with Weston getting that time with him but then there's just days it's like what am I doing did I imagine myself sitting in the floor all day and just just making up conversation so Weston can hear like me talking. And so I don't know, I feel like this week has just been a little hard for me. And I think a lot of it has to do with the weather. It's warming up. We're being, we're able to get outside and and do a lot more. So um, yeah, that's me. I think Danielle, that that would be a good episode to have a stay at home mom episode because I remember a coworker of mine decided to be a stay at home mom. She came back to work and within two months she was like, I can't be away from my kid. And that was fair. And she asked me to go to lunch with her when her kid was probably like, I don't know, six to eight months old. And I went out to lunch with her and she's, she like, I think I was at lunch with her for three and a half hours. And she was like, I just like, I need adult conversation. Like it is so hard Mm -hmm. to be sitting and not talk to an adult, you know? And I was like, I, I, you know, we've said it a million times. I couldn't be a stay at home mom. You're amazing. And And I would imagine like, I feel that way, not being with the kids all the time where I'm just like, I feel, I just don't feel right. You know, it's hard. Yeah. Being a mom's hard. It definitely is. And then the other thing, like today I took him to the play. Well, there's a bunch of playgrounds here on base. I took them, took him to the one that had like a kid swing, a, a toddler swing and we were swinging. And then I sat him down. And uh, there's gravel, like little gravels. Whoever makes, first off, whoever makes playgrounds, they need to do a better job. Like gravel, you know, little gravels, or even like there's a big drop off, you know, when they can walk. It's just, it's crazy to me. But anyways, he picked up the gravel. I was like, yeah, don't put it in your mouth. But he's, he puts everything in his mouth. He did uh, real quick. And so then I said, open your mouth. And he did. And when I went to go sweep it out, the kid bit me. He brought blood. He bit me. He has eight teeth. Bit me really hard. And then I was like, ow. And then he like cried because I was loud. And then there's a lady walking her dog. I'm like, she probably thinks I'm like yelling. (laughs) My one-year-old right now. And I wasn't. I was like, spit it out. Spit it out. And so I can only imagine what that lady thought. And I was like, okay, that's it. We're going home. And 
I, I didn't even finish our walk. We were going to walk a little further just because I was like, I can't manage today. <laughs> like, uh, what time does Ryan get home? But that's, that's kind of how I felt today. And I just wanted to be real about that because I don't want to pretend like staying at home is like rainbows and no. sunshine. It's not. But then he like makes it up with like the best hugs. And so makes it all worth it at the end. But such a challenge. It's like. I, same same thing like Hannah puts everything in her mouth too still at two and it's like and it's like she knows those things that you don't want her to put in her mouth she's gonna do it extra fast you know it's like <laughs> oh my gosh but yeah, yeah. I, I hear you that's tough does she wait and make sure you're watching uh nope she usually likes to like go and hide like she'll go hide and you know when she's going to mm-hmm. hide something bad's about to happen yeah. such a great time kids <laughs> But I did, we were talking to my parents' um, friends the other day, and they said, you know, you think you want your kids to be older and the problems will go away and it'll get easier. I'm just going to tell you this, big kids, big problems. And I was like, oh, Oh. no, that sounds terrible. (laughs) I feel like every stage is like, it doesn't get easier, it gets different. Different. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. And when it's new, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I don't have anything exciting to share this week i did get to see michelle and uh her family and her little daughter today so that was nice i feel like i haven't seen any of the kiddos in a while but nothing exciting otherwise cool all right well we want to kick it to our hot topic we're gonna talk about gatekeeping so um the definition of gatekeeping um for mother and maternal gatekeeping is a mother's refusal to allow others to engage in particular activities with her child. Uh, Mothers may deny loved ones, even their child's father permission to feed, change, or spend alone time with their baby. Um, This is something that I definitely was warned about before having Hannah uh, in the one parenting class I took before um, gatekeeping was a big thing that they stressed, uh, to us and to not do that to the dad and also to, you know, let yourself relinquish some control. And I, I, I struggle with this to this day. Uh, you know, we've been talking a lot about how Hannah connected really well with Brandon. Um, and so he did a lot with Hannah and I was also in a lot of pain and a lot of bad spots with, with, myself at that point. And, um, with Aubrey, she connects better with me right now. And I gatekeep big time. And like, if he does anything, I'm like quick to swoop in and take her from him. And like, you know, he like, yeah, I feel bad. Like even today I was outside with Hannah and I was, I got back in and I was like, why didn't you put her down? He's like, I, I never put her down. I've never put her down before. Like, well, why would I put her down? And I was like, well, that's really sad. You know, I shouldn't do that. She's five months old and he hasn't, hasn't put her down. Like, that's awful. So has he made comments to you about it? I mean, beyond like that kind of thing? Um, I think it's more like, it was more when Hannah, like certain things with Hannah that I would do that I'd be like, you're not doing it right. And he's like, is she going to be okay? I'm like, yep. He's like, so then I can do it my way. With Aubrey, we've kind of like divided and conquered. Like he handles Hannah a lot better. Um, So he's been okay with being the one that puts Hannah down every night and Mm -hmm. being the one who handles Hannah when I'm handling Aubrey, because when Aubrey's screaming like a banshee, which is like wild, we did not have that with Hannah. Like Aubrey screams um and I can calm her down it makes everybody's blood pressure go down like it makes everybody more relaxed if we can get her under control you know it has a whole new meaning now (laughs) was that (laughs) you're like it makes everyone's blood pressure come down. oh yeah totally oh man it's like (laughs) it's wild like there's been times where I've been like okay I'm gonna I'm gonna not jump in when he has her but when she starts screaming like that I know he like it's like nails on chalkboard to him. And I like want to swoop in so that he doesn't get stressed and have this resentment towards her. And it's like, I need to let that go. I need to let him parent her so that it's not like this the rest of their lives. I don't want her to not have a relationship with him because I've always, I'm always going to do this. 
but it's very difficult. I've always, I've always been a type A control freak. And so it's really, really, really hard for me. It's a work in progress. This past weekend, I was, I've been sick for like the last 10 days and Saturday morning, um, Wesson woke up, but I didn't hear him wake up. Like I was still out, I guess. And so Steven went and he got him out of bed and he's like, okay, great. Like we can let Leah sleep and you know, Wesson and I will have the morning. And then I don't know, not even like five minutes later, I heard Wesson crying and I came running out of the bedroom to check, make sure, get his breakfast ready, do all of those things. And Stephen's like, I was intentionally like trying to let you sleep. Like you're not feeling good. Go back to bed. I will handle this. And I, I have been so bad. Like it has been so hard for me to, to let go of any of that control. And I don't know when it will get better. Like I look back and what's interesting is like in the early days, like Steven did everything. Steven took care of Wesson anytime he cried. Like he had it down pat. We called it the dad touch. And like he was so present and strong and like just handled everything when Wesson was born. And so I don't know when I got like this or why I got like this, but like, Man, the idea of leaving Wesson with a babysitter, leaving, I mean, I struggle with leaving Wesson with Stephen, which is like so pointless. Like Stephen is a phenomenal dad. He's so great. And he's, him and Wesson are so cute together. It just like brings like the biggest smile to my face that they have that like connection. And every day when Wesson hears the garage door open that Steven's home from work, he literally screams and runs over to the garage door. So I don't know how I got to this point. And like Steven and I were talking about it the other night and he was like, yeah, I mean, if you got hit by a bus, I don't know that I would know what to do. And that hurt me. Cause I'm like, I shouldn't be taking those experiences away from you. Like I need to let you be a dad and it has been a struggle and a half for me and I don't know why but like I love those things I love taking him to school I love picking him up from school I love putting him to bed I love eating breakfast with him in the morning like I genuinely get so much joy out of those things so I don't know where the balance is but so could Steven yeah for sure and he does when he gets the opportunities but there's so few and far between Right. Well, that's, I think that's really good that you guys had that conversation of recognizing that and, you know, him being able to at least say what, what he would like or, you know, what's, what's important to him too. So it's so hard. It's so hard. Cause you're right. We are like, I like doing those things. I love doing those things. I love putting Aubrey to sleep. I love you know, doing all of those things. And it's really hard because it's, it's not fair to him. And I know it's not fair to Brandon, but it's also like, oh, it's so hard. Hard question, Leah. Do you think your conception journey has led to some of your, some of this? I think the fact that this is our only one I want to cherish every single moment that I can, but then it's not fair to Steven because he doesn't, that it, he doesn't get, he doesn't get around to, right? Like mm-hmm. lessons, what we got. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I guess in some ways probably. Yeah. I mean, it's probably, and this, and like, it's probably so many things just was curious. Mm-hmm. I was going to add like the most unexpected person told me, a quote maybe in the first two weeks of having Sierra. It was my uncle who became a father very late in life. I don't remember the age, but he was older. And he said this quote to me that has just resonated so strongly. He goes, parenthood is a succession of letting go. And, you know, I think about 
my own journey of gatekeeping and allowing others in. And it's like, there is this natural thing, like in year one, more than anything, in week one, in day one, in the early days, they need you a hundred percent. Like that succession of letting go is like, you are two joined organs essentially, or organisms that are feeding off of each other. Like the mom needs the baby, the baby needs the mom. And like, that is just nature in the first phase. And so I do think like, for me, it has, I'm starting to see my own succession of letting go, but that's taken, taken a long time myself. And I think the other hard part for me is that like, you know, forget, you know, the society's gender roles the end of the day, like the mother ends up taking lead on a lot of the baby's plans, activities, stages, etc. Like, as far as I know, we're the ones looking up, you know, what their next, you know, physical progression should be, when we should start solids, like what they should start. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, all of a sudden you forget about all the fir- things in the first year here, but, you know, transitioning off the bottle, transitioning to whole milk. Like those are things that I led in the family, not Ryan. And it puts so much pressure on that too. When I know I've been sitting for hours and hours on my phone or online researching this and all these things. And then when I try to let Ryan in to help out, I'm like, well, you don't know the whole story. You haven't, you, you don't, haven't done the research on it you know, you haven't done other things. And that's been like a hard, hard interaction for me. Um, even like little things this week, like I'm letting Ryan uh, pack her lunch this week because I'm going out of town at the end of next week so he can practice, right? And giving them that. So anyways, I'm still figuring out my balance too. I think that we figured out a really good rhythm. I think it's definitely getting e- easier for us. The older she's getting, the more like communicative she can be back to us and as we're getting into our new normal but that new normal is going to switch very soon again as well and then the last thing I just wanted to share that um, another mom shared with me on a walk is this theory called let them and it's just it's a Brene I don't know if it's just Brene Brown but she talks about it on her podcast around the concept of letting them and that was what real I needed to hear especially like month three or four when I was being so protective of everything Sierra was doing. I would get really mad at Ryan if you do something the wrong way or not the way I would do it. When like, I don't even know what I'm doing, right? At the same time. And, uh, but she was like, here's the concept. It's just called, it's simply like, let them. Let them learn, let them fail, let them grow, let them understand. And I carry that with me in work now. (laughs) I carry it with me, you know, in, in friendships. I carry it with me with my, you know, in any situation, you obviously don't want people to fail, especially with the child. But at the same time, he had to spend the time to learn how to be with her in order to evolve himself. So it's just a, it's, it's just a theory that I'm still working on myself. Um, but I carry with me quite a bit. It's tough. I feel like, um, I did that more at the beginning, like when Weston was more like a few months old. I'm trying to think. I think the most thing that stands out to me the most is like with my, if Ryan was going to feed Weston uh, like pumped breast milk and I would get so worked up if he wasted any of it or spilt it or, which that didn't happen often, but it it would sit out and like, if this is freshly pumped, you need to put it in the fridge after he drinks it or like whatever it was. And I would just get so like almost rage is like the word that's coming to my head uh if he didn't do it right and I think that's like the most thing that stands out to me um I guess for gatekeeping but I just I can only imagine because I know all of you you know you work both you and your spouses and so it's hard you you feel like you're competing for kind of that time together and it's hard you know to I feel like give or take as for me, when Ryan comes home, I'm like, all right, I'm going to the gym to work out and see you guys later. So it's just, it's hard for me not to relate. It's just, I'm in a different situation at this, at this time in my life. Um, So, but I could see 
there are things that I, I feel like I'm like, no, you have to cut the strawberries this way. Or you like, I'm afraid, I'm so afraid Weston's going to choke on something. And I'm like, you didn't prepare the food right. Or there's times I'm like, you didn't give him, I left and you didn't give him lunch. Sometimes I feel like that's, that's why we gatekeep. It's because I was like, what are you doing? Like, like if I weren't here, would, would Hannah have ever started solids? Like, you know, like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like what initiative would you take? to research and do those things. And like, sometimes when it does, like when things are crazy, like we're going through the sleep stuff with Hannah right now, like he has done some research on it and I appreciate that. It's like, well, why can't we do that all the time? <laughs> you know, cause it does feel like it's yeah. always on us, but it's also like, why would he go research if I'm just going to jump in and tell him what he needs to do anyway? It's not fair to him. Why would he want to do yep. that? That makes a lot of sense. I do do that a lot. Like Weston wouldn't go to the doctor if yeah like we were, we wouldn't have doctor's appointments actually we wouldn't even travel I'm the only one I told Ryan yesterday I'm like since you started dating me you've stopped like planning like buying plane tickets or where we're going like and I've been stressed about it because we're supposed to be going to this family reunion and I'm like oh my gosh I'm like I can't even like why don't you buy the tickets and why don't you figure it out why is it always me so I I, I do yeah that's I'll tell you why Remember when we were uh, in, we went to up to Montana to visit Danielle and Weston and Ryan right after he was born and Bryce and I booked our flights at the exact same time, but we booked them separately. So I booked mine and he booked his. So the day before we were getting ready to leave to come back home, I gatekeeped maybe a little bit, gatekept, whatever. And I went to go check both of us in for our flights and I was unable to check Bryson for his flight and I could not figure out why. Looked into it and found out that he booked the exact same flight, but for the next day. So this is why. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's true. This is also funny because Stephen and I have had this hot debate over who in relationships books the travel. And I'm like, I think it's always the wife. And he's like, no, I think the man does it. And I was like, I think you are so wrong on this. So is the general consensus that the wife books the travel? 100% over here. We wouldn't go anywhere (laughs) if I didn't book anything. We would, but we would have the worst layovers. We would stop 18 times. Like, it drives me bonkers. Like, I appreciate trying him trying, but he's like, this is why I don't try anymore because I do it wrong every time. Like I'll book a <laughs> flight and you'll be like, why'd you book that flight? What were you thinking? I'm like, but how is it, how is it that hard to be like, Hey, maybe well, let's not take an overnight flight with a child. Like maybe let's not do that. You know, even if it's $50 more to go during the day, it's worth it for our sanity. You know? Yeah, I get it. I obviously, I, I don't have a, a human child to gatekeep with, but I definitely gatekeep with Tommy our dog I mean like if if a vet appointment needs to get booked or if let's say Bryce takes Tommy to the vet if there's any sort of follow-up that needs to happen they call me and I know I think Bryce and I are on the same page about it and it's not because he's incapable but I just think about things so much differently Mm -hmm. and he'll he'll call me and he'll say all right I just got off the phone with the vet and here's this information this and blah 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 and I'll say, well, did you ask this? Well, did you ask that? Well, what about this? Mm-hmm. And he's like, ugh, I tried. <laughs> Again, like, bless him for trying. But it's not that he's incapable. He's just a different mindset. And, but it, it makes it hard to be like, all right, I'm 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 letting go. This is yours. However you're going to do it is fine. And I'm going to be okay with it. It's, that's hard, especially with type A personalities. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that makes Yeah. Sorry, now that I'm thinking about it, I was like, I think I had it all backwards because I do that a lot because I feel like Ryan has commented to me like, I just won't do it if I can't do it right because he gets his like pride Mm -hmm. hurt a little and because and I've been trying to tell myself like, okay, there's different ways of doing things. Mine might be quicker and easier. His might be the long route, but he'll still get there. But it's hard for me to do that when I'm like, no, just do it like this. So now uh, it's because it's late because I, I've, I've intervened myself like, no, do it like this. Or and he's like, stop, just let me try or let me do it, whatever it is. And I'm like, 
So yeah, I guess I do gatekeep. I just came to that realization. So. I mean, it, it's totally, there's so many areas of our lives we probably gatekeep and um, not just, and beyond motherhood. Yeah. I, I start thinking about, yeah, all the, all the areas you start to like control and, but then, you know, Ryan, this, this on Monday, he, we t- decided to call in Sarah for a pediatrician appointment and they happened to be available like 30 minutes later. And I was like, I've got a big meeting. I can't go in. And so the reality was he was going to go into the pediatrician himself. And that was the first time he had done that. I've gone, taken her by myself. We've gone a lot together. And he, I don't want to say he surprised me. Like I knew he was capable, but like he crushed it with her, right? Like he asked, he asked all these great questions. He was able to like play Lady Gaga for her on the way to the, the the appointment, you know, got the right feedback from, from it was texting me updates the whole time. So that I think helped me feel like I was part of the appointment, but it was just awesome to see, see him there. And I was just, it was just one of those moments where by default, I was like, well, I got to go to this appointment. And it was a good learning moment for myself to being like, I didn't have to go to that appointment and it was okay. But you know, that's 13 months in the making (laughs) there, but it's a baby step. You okay, Leah? Yeah, I think that's one that's hard for me. Because Steven is so great and he's always the one asking the right questions and catching things that the doctors say that I don't catch. And I don't feel like I have a healthy grasp on it. I mean, you guys saw me postpartum, like, you know how much postpartum anxiety I went through and how hard that was Mm -hmm. for me. Um, I never had the postpartum depression, but my anxiety was through the roof. And I don't know if I've ever recovered from that. I don't know if I'll have it, like, if I'll be like this for the rest of my life. Like, I don't know how to move through this. Yeah. Because robbing Steven of parenting moments isn't what I want my goal to be and he's a great dad and so I don't know what type of work I need to do for myself to not to not be like this because I don't think it's healthy I mean even today Lisa like you offered for your mom and Brandon to babysit and like I was, we were sitting and having breakfast and I was talking to Steven and Steven's like, do it. Like, why, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you take a day with your friends and let somebody that you trust babysit him? And I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I wouldn't. Um, but it's like, it physically manifests in me. Like, I don't know. I just, I just don't feel like. I don't feel like it's healthy or productive, but I I love doing all those things. And like right now I'm like really having a hard time because Wesson doesn't take a bottle before a bed anymore. Like he just goes to bed. He walks to his room, walks to his changing table, it changes diaper. And then he just goes to bed. And like, I miss, I miss our bedtime routine. Mm-hmm. Like I loved that time together. And I guess it's just going fast. I don't know. Well, and I think that's the hard thing too. It's like, look, I don't know the right answer, right, to to what you're going through. But I also think there's so much to reframe in in not being like I don't I don't want to say you're being hard on yourself, but more just like you're reframing to like you're cherishing this time together. You're cherishing all all of this, like you said, it's going so fast with Wesson. You're being there, like you have his best interests in mind at all times. Like you are there to be his all encompassing mother. And like, that is beautiful. That is so beautiful. And, and he's so lucky for that. Like, yes, there needs to be a balance, but I also think, I think some of this can be a reframe in your mind to like the gift you're giving him and the gift that he's giving you in this such a sacred period of time that we're never going to get back again. Thank you for saying that. And 
giving that perspective. I mean, cause that's, I don't know. That's kind of like how I feel. Like I would just feel like I'm yeah. genuinely trying to cherish every moment. Like, right. Cause I mean, I think the, the topic of gatekeeping comes with that negative connotation, right? That it's not okay to gatekeep would, yes, there's a line of everything. But the other day, like, there's a reason it happens. There's a reason, you know, and there's, I, just, I think a lot, a lot, a lot about mothers through the days, through the ages and years. Like, I think a lot about cave women having babies. And if I haven't talked about this, before, you know, I think a lot about Native Americans living in Walnut Canyon having babies and like the just visceral, natural attachment that comes with a mother child relationship is again, it's just it's biological, it's it's natural. And I think there probably is a lot of society's evolution that has maybe cause some of the separation, encouraging the separation too soon. And so I think what you're experiencing to be very candid is natural and beautiful and visceral. And it is your motherly instinct to be with your son. Like that's just how I see it from my perspective. I think, I think that's a good perspective too. Like it's amazing when my mom or my mother-in-law are around and they're like, Brandon is an incredible dad. Like he is so, he participates in everything. He does everything you do. Like my husband would never change a diaper. My husband would never feed them ever. They, you know, like times have changed so much where dads are so much more present and active now. Whereas like maybe they weren't active in our parents' age because the gatekeeping was even worse, right? Or maybe it's because of the social norms at that time. And now it's like the dads are so much more, you know, participatory and it's hard. It is really hard. It's also like, you know, I have moments of jealousy where I'm like, Hannah likes him way more than me, but maybe if I just started doing some of these things, then that won't happen. You know, it's like, yeah, that's not the right reason to do that. Like, I want them to have great relationships with their dad. So it it's not easy. I was sitting on our little Adirondack chairs with Hannah today, and she's just telling me how much she loved you. Oh, she, it's so sweet. I, I, <laughs> I keep thinking for you guys, like, man, you guys just wait. It keeps getting better and better. Like, it's so fun to watch Hannah. And the things that come out of her mouth are just incredible. Like you guys are, are it's going to be so fun coming up. I mean, it's, it is now enjoy your baby cuddles while you have them, if you still have them. But yeah, it's like, Oh, it's just going to keep getting better. It will. I promise. Lisa, I just want to thank you for that perspective. Like just you wait, it's going to get better. Like the positivity with that, because I'm sure all of you have heard it. Just you wait. Just wait till they're in their terrible twos and they're back to just you wait, like all the negative stuff. And I'm like, and so I'm just thankful that you say that. And I definitely am trying to be more present when I'm, I'm like, just wait there when they're walking and they're so cute and they're like a little drunk person walking around. Like, yes. That's my favorite yes. part right now. He's walking around and he's like, whoa, like trying to get his balance. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious until he falls down and hit something, but, but it's just, I, I appreciate, um, you saying that. And so I've actually was thinking about that today. Like Lisa always says, just you wait, like, this is so exciting. And so it makes me excited for the future. But Leah, I completely understand. Like we've talked about just looking at our, our boys and just imagine them getting married tomorrow, but I mean, we still <laughs> but have to cry about it, but I mean, we still got a lot of a lot of good years and so well that's one of one of the things that I've I've really appreciated about you Lisa is like anytime I have texted you and said like oh, I'm so sad like this state like I love this stage I never want him to change like I love this stage you've always been the one to be like 
every stage is better. Every stage is my favorite. Like the next stage is always my favorite. And so like, that's been really encouraging. Cause like Danielle said, like there's so much negativity out there. Like people are just like, I don't know. I don't know why you have kids if you're just going to dog on them the whole time. But like, I've always appreciated that perspective. Like every stage is my favorite. And, and that has been my experience, honestly, like each stage has been right? better than the last and it's been so much fun. Yeah. But I'm also like myself, I'm trying not to be like, trying not to rush through stages. Like right. I can't wait to the next one because it's going to be so exciting. No. Like I found myself doing that a lot in year one, just because like I loved it in a lot of ways, but I am loving, loving this stage right now. Right. Like, and yes, it's, it's better, but I also am just trying to be cautious of like, like I'm not trying to be like I can't wait till she can talk and she can play and she, you know all these things either so I'm trying to stay present and be excited for the future without fast forwarding this and that that's been a hard balance to to find we have two girls that are like next door to Michelle and the door over and I think they're five or six and I'm like I don't want that stage <laughs> I'm not I don't want that stage like let's not get there yeah, like I, I don't, I keep telling Brandon when we have hard days with Hannah because she's coming more independent and sassy is like, we're going to want these days back. Like, I know it's hard right now, but we're going to want these days back when there are babies and they look to us and they need us and they want us and I don't want them to not want us. Yeah, anymore. but there'll be, there'll be moments that are totally different and unexpected in, in those ages that True. you don't think you want that you know, you're going to look back and say, this is amazing. This is incredible. Look at my daughter. Look at my kids. Yeah. So true. Yeah, there's, there's beauty in every stage and yeah, definitely tough to find the balance of not wanting to wish time away, but still being excited for the future. Both are possible and both are okay. I heard a quote. This will be my like last thing of, um, and I don't, I'm probably going to butcher it, but it was something along the lines of people say kids slow you down. Well, maybe that's the point. And Wesson mm-hmm. and I went to get the mail today and it was so slow. It took us forever to get the mail. Like, and we were just like slowly walking out there. Cause like whole nother tangent, he still doesn't have shoes. So he was out there barefoot. Um, but, and he was like really methodical with like how he was moving. And I, that's all I could think of was like, this is, maybe this is the point. Like mm-hmm. we're just doing everything a little bit more slowly and, and I don't hate it. Mm-mm. I read a quote before I was even considering having kids like way before. And it was a little girl asked her mom why they were always rushing. Why are you always, why are you always rushing? Why are you always telling me hurry, hurry, hurry. And she was like, and it literally made me cry. And I was like, it's so true. We do that to our kids so much. And it's like, I try to let them, I try to let Hannah take her time and do the things and try to learn how to do things on her own because you know what, why, why do, why rush her? It's just, it's silly. You know, of course, sometimes you want to hurry, but yeah, it's, it, it's a lot. Yeah. Enjoy the time while we have it. And that wraps up another episode of Mom Jeans, Trying to Fit into Motherhood. Thank you again so much for listening to us. And if you enjoyed this podcast, please consider giving us five stars so other mothers out there like you can find us and listen. If you would like, you could follow us on any of our socials at Mom Jeans, the podcast. If you have questions, would like to send us your birth story or give us suggestions or things that you would like to hear, please email us at hello at momjeansthepodcast.com. See you next week.